So my guys, welcome to 2022. And as always, with a new year comes new mobile games. And so I don't know about you guys, but to be honest, I've been having a little bit of trouble trying to hype myself up for like any upcoming mobile games. There doesn't seem to be overly much coming. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of Genshin clones coming out, which is really funny. Or PGR or Honkai clones. I think we're, yeah, we're getting to like a critical mass. But alas, among all of these games, I have found some gems. And so here are the top three games games, the mobile games that I am anticipating for hopefully 2022. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about three different mobile games that are upcoming, hopefully, maybe, strong maybe for global. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure about that, but like I, I'm going to pray. I'm going to do big praise and pray that they are coming to global this year. And so to kick things off, we have this beautiful, beautiful visual over here. And so my guys, Welcome to Reverse 1999. And as you can tell from the vibes of this, it is very much like olden day London. Uh, if you actually watch through the trailers and stuff, they have very, very thick British accents, which is really, really cool. So as always, I'm unfortunately not gonna be able to give you guys any sound because I keep getting my ass DMCA'd and I don't wanna play that game anymore. But just have a quick look at this trailer. Like the visuals are so impressive. The atmosphere and when you guys get to it, the sound and the designs are so, so freaking awesome. The live 2D, we've got a lot of like links to real life events back in history. And I just think that the context for this game is so like, it's so incredibly innovative because not many game publishers or game developers actually take this kind of route, like going for the history, going for like the nice vibes like this, because a lot of the time they're going to be going for like sci-fi or like fantasy, which are two very easy genres to develop for or to write for as well. And so whilst this trailer is really cool and Oh my god, if that is the villain, man, I am a... <laughs> I am freaking in. Anyway, anyway, let me show you guys a little bit more about Reverse 1999, in particular the gameplay itself. So for context, in this video right here, it says Timekeeper, Timekeeper, are you asleep? We as the player are referred to as the Timekeeper, very similar to Arknights is the Doctor, and then you got Alchemy Stars is the Navigator. And so before we get into this video, big shout out to Kuzdel VN for this footage. And so let me just flick you through what the game actually looks like. Here is some CBT gameplay as of perhaps one or two days ago. Unfortunately, I did not make it into the CBT because I did not sign up for it. So yeah. Anyway, so here are some of the cutscenes. As you can see, a lot of live 2D and what you can't hear right now, unfortunately, is the live voice acting. Although everything you see is in Chinese, all of the voices are actually in English, very British English. So the Regulus, Regulus is the main character that you just saw. She has the thickest accent that I've ever ever heard. So yeah, just flicking through this one, like as you can see, the live 2D is great. The animations are really, really nice. Everything is kind of floaty and animated, not just very, very still. And if I move through to see a few more cutscenes to progress a little bit further, you guys will just see the live 2D is actually really well done. Very much reminds me of at least Alchemy Stars level, which is really freaking good. And so whilst this footage is like the first 35 or 40 minutes of the gameplay, uh, there was, let me just say that there was a lot of uh, interactions or a lot of these cutscenes. However, in the depths of all of these cutscenes, there is a battle system. So let me show you guys real quick. So what you are seeing here is our party on the right hand side and then the enemies on the left hand side. On top of that, we have a bunch of actions down here on the bottom right hand side. We have cards that represent different actions. Hopefully you guys can see, but at the very bottom there says attack, 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 buff, attack. And so there are three types of cards or three types of actions that you can take. There are first of all attacks which deal damage to the enemies and then there are buffs which obviously gives you buffs. And the third one that is not shown here are the debuffs which obviously debuff the enemies. So from all of these cards you are able to select two every turn so as you can see you have two actions up here and then when you have selected your actions you can then go ahead and lock them in and these actions will be performed. So yes it is very much going to be a turn-based combat. So here we go with the actions and there is our first action Action. We have her doing some light beam thing and then we have our second attack where she is going to fire off another light beam thing. I guess maybe this is how the olden people of 1999 thought. And then on top of that, when you draw the same two cards, so you can see these two are actually identical cards, they fuse together to make a stronger variant. So what's going to happen here is that he is going to tap on this one. It's going to take up the first action and now he has the two star attack for this character over here. And that is in a nutshell how this is all going 
going to work in terms of battle and after we finish this battle hopefully we are going to go off into somewhere but as you can see it is very much 2d the background does look very alive it is honestly quite nice the vibes certainly remind me of like your Arknights, your Alchemy Stars, although like their settings are completely different. We've got like Cataclysmic for Arknights. And then we've got the Navigator building his harem in Alchemy Stars. These games all give me like a really, really similar vibe, right? Like really high quality original IP. But on top of that, very, very story driven as well, as well as like some really interesting combat mechanics. However, in terms of Reverse 1999, I have been told that this system is similar to the seven deadly sins phone game unfortunately i don't know how true that is but like when i see this down here this looks pretty fun the art style looks great the story like i've skimmed through it it looks pretty cool and so it's for all of these reasons that i am super super hyped probably the most hyped for a reverse 1999 and so with that, let's move on to our next game, X Asterisk. X Asterisk is developed by your boys Hypergriff, who did do Arknights. And so if they do hopefully come along to Global, maybe they'll be published by Yostar, or maybe they'll self-publish, I don't know. But what I can say to you guys is that, wow, that character really looks like Nian. Anyway, X Asterisk, this is a really interesting game, because if I scroll down to the very bottom, what you are going to see is that X Asterisk, the first premium game presented by Hypergriff, reveals an exploration of episodic narrative and 3D RPG gameplay. Premium game to me implies that it is going to be a paid game. So all of this, like what I'm about to show you is going to be paid only and there is no need to think about, oh, I need to spend 300 bucks to spark this freaking new character. Maybe it will have ongoing updates. Maybe there will be DLCs, but what is certain for now is that this game is probably not going to be a gacha. But as far as we can tell, it is most certainly going to be a mobile game. And so with that being said, let me show you guys some of the pre-alpha gameplay footage. So as you guys can see here, like the shading is really nice. It's got a very, very unique style to it. The interface is really cool. And then we've also got these like cool cutscenes with these characters from the game engine. And look at that, like you can actually rotate around the character. You are going everywhere. It's, I'm, I struggle to call it open world, but it is probably going to be quite so. And as you're about to see over here, she is going to be interacting with some of the world elements which is pretty cool she can jump off places stuff like that and then when we get to combat so let me just skip quickly over to some combat we are very much going to be going into some turn-based combat so i don't know how you guys are feeling about turn-based combat because i know a lot of the recent gatches it has a lot of agency a lot of control over it whether it be like arpgs like honkai and pgr or just like real-time decisioning from like blue archive and to an extent princess connect otherwise obviously you've got your arc Nights, you've got your Genshin, the turn-based ones, you can just stop and think about it. This one is going to be very similar to that. And so if I just hit play again, we are going to have some gorgeous, gorgeous animations, but the way in which this combat system actually works, it's still a little bit hazy because all we can really infer from this, so unfortunately you guys can't see that. Let me just make that a bit smaller. You can see that it looks like we have a bunch of skills over here and we have a bunch of these characters. So if I go back a frame, you can see that each of these orbs are actually disappearing each time this person is getting tapped. And so whilst it is a turn-based combat game, I suspect it is going to be very, very story driven. And so next, let's have a quick look at the character menus themselves. I believe the skills are over here, the ones that we just saw in combat. And then it looks like we are able to have a lot of different choices in terms of which skills we want to bring into battle and potentially have more characters for combat. And so with that, I am really, really hoping that X Asterisk will be releasing soon to us. I cannot freaking wait. After seeing all of that gameplay and stuff, I'm just really hoping that it is going to also have a P PC version. After seeing all of these different systems like and how Hypergriff want to turn this into a standalone purchase premium game, I'm honestly just really hoping that it is going to have a PC version or a PC client or have some level of like omni-channel playing. But otherwise, that is it for X Asterisk. And so with that being said, let's move on to the last topic of the day, which is Honkai Star Rail. Most of you are probably going to be very familiar with Honkai Star Rail. It was very, very hyped a few months ago 
ago, maybe in October, November. And that's because that's pretty much when Star Rail was kind of announced and then went almost immediately into CBT. Honestly, I've raved on about Star Rail so many times already. I am super, super pumped for this game. And whether you guys love Mahoyo or hate Mahoyo, like there is one thing that is constant with Mahoyo and that is they develop actually high quality games. Some of these games may have been perceived as like, oh, they have bad marketing or oh, they have like really crappy systems. They're greedy or whatever, but like at the end of the day, the core gameplay from Genshin Impact to Honkai Impact to GGZ to whatever, they have always invested a lot into the games themselves. It's just when they decide to monetize, that's where things for some people get a little bit shaky. But otherwise, with all of that context out of the way, like Honkai Star Rail, let's just get into some of the gameplay because like this bad boy, oh my God, I'm probably most anticipating this one here. So I've actually covered off Star Rail before. If you guys have not seen it, you can check out my video from a few months ago. But essentially it is open world, but it is not action oriented. It is very much turn-based, which is pretty cool to see. So as you can see over here, we are taking our party for a run for a jog there is a minimap on the top left hand corner and then when we hit certain places or if we get like a preemptive strike onto some of the enemies we then go into combat so let me just show you combat real quick this is going to be a three verse three generally speaking we are going to have three characters and each of these characters are going to have two skills each so q and e over here i don't think you could see that now you can see that so q for one skill e on the other and then as you can see up here on the top left hand corner we have the turn order. We are going to have this guy's turn up here and then we're going to have one of the troops and then we're going to have our character's turn next and then so forth. However, the thing about Honkai Star Rail for me personally is not like 100% the gameplay. It does look pretty interesting. It does look like there are going to be like cool interactions, a little bit of innovations, especially with how like Genshin brought in the elemental reactions kind of gameplay. There are very much similar elements to that in this game. However, like for me, I am just a very, very big fan of the Honkai lore. I've played through Honkai Impact 3, I've finished all of the story, most of it, and then I've read a whole bunch of the manga, a couple of the visual novels, stuff like that. And so for me personally, I really want to know what Honkai Star Rail has to do with like the larger Honkai universe. I want to know if it's actually related, if like seeing Dvalin in the Honkai universe actually has any bearing. Are all of these universes actually related? Stuff like that. And so as you can tell, for me, that is a very, very personal reason as to why I'm so invested in this game. And on top of that, it is always really nice to see some of our fan favorite characters, not these two. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see them in this gameplay. But we've got recurring characters from Honkai, such as Bronya, such as Seelie. And of course, everybody's favorite, Himako and Welt himself, the actual Welt from Honkai 3. And so honestly, I think I'm being a little bit optimistic in thinking, well, hoping that Honkai Star Rail is going to release this year. I reckon we're probably going to be getting maybe another beta and then maybe another beta and then maybe we will see a release. However, this could certainly push into 2023. And so with Honkai Star Rail out of the way, that takes me to the end of the video theoretically if I did not have this one to talk about. Tower of Fantasy has certainly been one of the games that I have been most hyped about. However, there is a lot of sad news regarding this game right here. But before we get into the sad news, let me just show you some of the gameplay like like look at this it just looks incredible to play and honestly i've already played it before i've played the cbt i definitely have an opportunity to play the uh the chinese version of it but unfortunately i'm just gonna have to give it a pass right now but let me just show you a little bit more of like this world it's very very scrappy it's very very sci-fi but like not fully fully sci-fi if you know what i mean i'm a massive fan of this kind of scrap environment they're all junkyardy i think maybe that's a great way to put it. But yeah, for a long time, this was known as a Genshin killer or like a PGR or whatever. I don't know. It, this game was marketed as a lot of killers. It, it killed a lot of things, right? And so here is just some of the sample gameplay. You can switch weapons and then you can combo with them. It's actually really cool. However, the really cool thing about Tower of Fantasy that I liked that Genshin does not have is a vertical combat. And so with all of that being said, that takes me to the sad news, which is that the studio behind this game, they have indicated that they will not be 
releasing a global version at least in the immediate future. They don't really have any development plans for it and there's just a lot going on right now with the game in the CN in their homeland that they need to figure out before they can even consider bringing it over to the western world. I personally think that it is such a shame but I kind of get it. On the other hand I kind of don't want to admit that I don't really want to get it. I just want this game to come out. But yeah that is the reason why this bad boy Tower of Fantasy is not on my most hyped list because I know that it's not coming. On the other hand, I could play the CN version, but to be honest, I'm just not really a fan of like, oh, not being able to read half the stuff as well as not 100% understanding the story, stuff like that. And so with Tower of Fantasy out of the way, that is going to bring us to the end of this video. And so you already know what time it is. It is time for the secret question. And that secret question goes a little bit beyond this video. Like I've shown you guys four games that I am hyped about, three of which are probably coming. But to be honest, there are a lot more games that are going to be coming out in 2022. And so here is my question. Out of these three games, did any of them pique your interest? We have Reverse 1999, we have X Asterisk over here, and then lastly, we have a train. The Honkai Star Rail Train. And on top of that, if you guys are not interested in any of these three games or even Tower of Fantasy, let me know what you guys are hyped for for the 2022 release, hopefully, because there are certainly a lot of games that might have slipped outside of my radar. And so if you guys could drop your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've made it up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, then please like this video. And if you would like to see more of it, then please subscribe. But otherwise, as your British sounding regulars once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye